the way it's structured, I want to do stuff like make it so that like if someone's really far away from you or out of your line of sight or um, you're not looking at them or whatever, then it just reduces the number of messages it sends between those players. Oh, that's so, smart, it doesn't yeah. need to be as... Yeah, like doing it better than Nintendo okay. does. Like just <laughs> doing it better than Nintendo. <laughs> Well, I'm not doing it better than Nintendo yet. Right now, I'm on the implement yeah. the tutorial of Photon stage of networking. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, but, you're yeah, on the same I'm level as Nintendo, and I, I can feel it. Stuff, <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping yeah. that if I do that stuff, then I will be able to raise the um, player limit. But I also have some ideas for stuff like if I want to do a friends type of thing, right? The problem is that I want to make sure the rooms fill up really fast because the game is a lot more fun when the rooms are full. But if the rooms are full, then you can't join your friends because the room is full. Yeah. So I might yeah. do something like you can do, you can make it so that the room size is, say, a certain amount, and then um, add in like reserved slots for certain players. So I might be able to build something like if you have like the room size is is like ten. On the back oh, end, cool, maybe cool. it's actually like 12, so if you join your friends specifically, then there's room for you, and nobody else will be able to join unless they're a friend of somebody to create a little more space, something like that. Because I really don't want to make cool. it so that, like, the way the networking works is it tries to fill up the oldest and fullest rooms first, which basically leads to all rooms always being full, because you can only join a most full room, and if people leave, it either gets immediately filled or that room slowly dies. Which I think is really important, because it feels so much better to just join a full room than it is to join yeah. a kind of full room. THC, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Thank Sorry. you. No you more thing. To... Yeah, do you know how to fix that just by the way? I have no like fucking people. idea what's happening. <laughs> it's, it's whenever, it's even when it's done. So if you end push really push to talk, or you end, or you click your push to mute, or... Your mic cuts out when you're yeah. on regular talking. So it's the just way whatever it mic works is with. for whatever reason, it seems to keep sending the last packet of sound repeatedly. Yeah. If yeah. it's not getting oh, anything uh, new. Good mic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only yeah. thing I can think of is that maybe I can do something where it says like, if I'm getting the same packet over and over, like cut it out. But it's, I haven't done and like for as little as I've done with the regular networking, I've done even less with the voice. The voice is a complete black box. So, yeah. <laughs> beep, yeah, okay. beep, boop, boop. You were. What the? Uh, it's. <laughs> just so you know, let me. I commonly refer to it as machine gun micing. Yeah. yeah. Getting machine gun mic. <laughs> and also, I'm about to die here in a sec. Do you like it behind we're, the we're ears? Here for oh, your last rights. So, uh, yeah. These are my last rights. Getting, Jones, getting Apollo. Apollo. Yeah. Getting Apollo. Apollo. Oh, that was good. My wires. He turned around. Ooh. I found you. I didn't even know there was a cave there. <laughs> I didn't either. Not gonna lie. I haven't played this map. <laughs> no. So good. I love the this map. That was my last one. It's, it's machine all, gun mic. It's just it all wall good. jumps. Follow update. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Wall jumps are my favorite, oh, and this map is nice. just 100% wall jumps. Oh. Alright, you guys wanna play 4v4? Or I think we still need to stick to 3v3. I thought there was eight people in. <laughs> no, bless, he died. No, I'm still here. Oh, oh right, just, yeah. I'm still alive. Oh, then I'm about someone to joined die. them. We can also just I'm about play to regular die. for a little bit. So we... Exactly. So, yeah, so I'm at like... Oh. 2%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't need to do like... I'm plugged in right now. with Lemming. <laughs> Yo, Yo, Lemming, where did he go? Mo uh, where did I go? Hold on. <laughs> do you remember what shampooing is? <laughs> oh, what? Oh! Wait, you're on TTT! I am on TTT. I don't know if I played with you yet. Yeah. Probably not. I actually wanted to try out for that team. I asked the guy earlier. Dan? Oh, uh, he hasn't responded. No! Right to my hand. I saw one. Might because I think we might be full. I don't know if we're full or not.
So the, the simple motion is literally just scraping your hand against the wall. And because, yeah, practice. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like that, right? Yeah. It, it's easiest to do on the side of your hand. Which is weird because your hands are spheres. Yeah, I know. Maybe it's just a, a practice thing. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think, it, I think it actually has to do with the natural motion, like the mat natural arcs of your hands. Like, if your hand, if your wrist is rotated and you try and swing your arm, it's different than if it's kind of straight, you know? I think, yeah. I think it's like a second order difference. Like, it's not the exact position of your hand, but it's the way the position of your hand affects the way your arm swings. <laughs> That's definitely, like, because you can do it with any part of your hand. Yeah. You know? Hey, who tagged me? Nice. Yeah, I really, I I really like the way complexity arises out of simple mechanics. The simple mechanics are deep enough. Oh yeah, like Conway Game of Life kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Oh wait, I'm that's why I think that this game is fun, even though it's basically just the locomotion, because <laughs> there's so much it, it to it. <laughs> It's just a good enough low condition on its own, you know? <laughs> hey! Easy. I only added this is way better. because this was too hard. Okay, no, I can't walk. I remember at the beginning of, like, wall climbing was starting, a ton of people were talking about the position of your hands, how it had to be, like, uh -huh. in a specific way. Yeah. <laughs> And like, it, it's crazy the kinds of things people just come up with their brain, in their exactly. mind, because like, people are like, why is grabbing so inconsistent? Like, sometimes I do it and it works fine, and other times it's completely messed up. And they thought that like, the grab button affected the way stuff works. Oh yeah. And even now people will say like, oh, I find this easier to do if I'm pressing the grab button. But I think that's just because, again, the way that your hand is positioned when you're pressing the buttons is subtly different from the way your hand is when it's open. And that just affects the way they move. I do yeah. find it easier to, uh, I won't climb with my far yeah. end finger out. Oh yeah. I am. It <laughs> makes it much like easier to wall climb like this. So I just click the grip on it while wall climbing. So I do it like this. I have it, but I feel that way. The bad man is I don't know why. I do it like oh, this. That, that could be good too, actually. I'm just gonna... Just kind of reload over here. I can't even... <laughs> 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 this is tagged, oh no. Did you ever watch uh, oh, a never ending story? story? A never ending story 2. Oh no. Didn't there's you see a, me tweet about it? There, no, there's a part in that movie where, although that is kind of what reminds me, um, <laughs> but there's a part in that movie where the kid is like making wishes for climbing, uh, like, things yeah. on the wall. And like, he wishes for one and then it morphs out of the wall and appears. That, that was exactly what I was thinking when I made this. Like, the way you <laughs> kind of go up, hand by hand. <laughs> uh... And like, the, uh, the little bridge in the in the forest with from uh everquest in the wood elf city they have these huge wooden bridges shaped the same way and then i had the idea for the the way the tree the dead tree looks from link's house in the uh, ocarina wait, of time uh, ocarina the same. Sign, yeah yeah uh, wait you made this Corey forest yeah <laughs> what, what is the idea behind these things? Like, what are the things drowning out of the walls? Um, this is just kind of evocative of, like, <laughs> nothing in particular, I guess. It just reminds me of, like, those desert houses and stuff that are more angular, you know? But I didn't yeah. have any good ideas for how it should look, so I just kind of threw them together. And then I thought they looked pretty cool from, like, far away. It looks almost like a honeycomb or something. So I just yeah. added the clay texture on them. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Wait, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wait, wait, wait. No, you didn't see me. You didn't see my spot. That's my hiding spot. No. Uh, the, the sounds really adds a lot, even though they're very basic. And I, really I, like the I, I love the cactus sound. Especially sounds. the birds what? chirping in the forest. Oh, that's uh, just I love cactus. that sound so much. No, oh, oh, no. It's so good. Is so I really want to add a rainy area. I think that'd be awesome. And like, like yeah, I want to like, have a snow area where all the sounds are like. What, oh, yeah. What's the term for the effect? The wind? There's just like no reverb or something. Like when the, the dam when everything's covered in snow. Yeah, and all the sounds just disappear. You know, I love that. Yeah, dampen. 
You should I do a foggy, foggy level. level. Oh, a foggy, really foggy level. Forest. Man, there's so many just great ideas, but I'm just so slow to everything. <laughs> if you had trees you in the next map, something. I would very much appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I need to like, Here, I'll make a level for you. Out. And then you can implement modding all if people have custom models. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's, already, already, yeah, there's yeah. already modding. Like, there's a oh, huge... Yeah. The custom modding, modding server is, very is bigger great. than the main modding. Discord server right now. Yeah, yeah the there's modding like server is 14,000 members or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bonkers. <laughs> a lot of the levels are just... Map you posted on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have oh. bigger ideas. Like, it's such a cool feeling to have... Like, I think what's really cool about VR, and what is missing in a lot of the way that people do stuff right now, is like, the sense of movement and scale. Like, the reason why people love Skyrim, right, where they're like, oh my god, that mountain over there, you can go there, is really, really compelling. But the problem with VR right now is that almost every game is either, like, teleport, or smooth yeah. locomotion, right? So, that completely destroys the, the, that sense of magic of, like, being in a large open environment and traveling through it. Because it's such no. a disconnecting experience. But like, yeah. I built it so that that tree was about like two kilometers away. And like, I ran the whole way. And it's so cool looking back and seeing the tree that it came from shrink more and more and more. It, it's really yeah. cool. So I'm yeah. trying to like figure out how to incorporate that kind of thing. Like right now, everything is compacted <laughs> into these little spaces, right? Like there's the forest space, and the canyon space, and the cave space. But I want to make it so that like these areas are still where you play the game, but you start in this larger area that has that is completely unbounded. Because right now Hello? the the obvious like <laughs> trap is that you know oh I'm playing a video game in this tiny area that I can't go out of right. Oh! Subconsciously you understand that that's being done because it's a video game, so you need the walls everywhere. But I want to mm -hmm. make it so that like you're in this larger open area that has these maps in it where you go to play but it feels like you're just located here and if you wanted to you could go somewhere else and the only thing stopping you is the fact that it's going to take a long time and there's not necessarily much out there but i think that would sell the illusion of being in a plausible place a lot better because then it'll feel like oh yeah this is just where i am and i'll play tag over there if i want to instead of oh you know i'm stuck in the video game world do which which map do i want to choose or whatever so that that feeling is really cool so i'm i'm working on that but it's slow going cuz so, yeah. open world girl attack confirmed? Is that is that what we're hearing? <laughs> Not open world exactly, but just like the the concept of like when you say open world, that immediately ha is like a really loaded term, right? Like you've got all of these video game concepts built into that when you say open world. So I'm not trying to build things in like, a, oh, I'm going to make this open world type way. I'm just trying to implement specific aspects of feeling into it, you know? And I think that the idea of having a wide space that you traverse yourself that isn't artificially limited, I think that... I think that would feel awesome. So, kind of open world, like, but not like. Is, will it be like similar to your uh, when you had like capture the flag and like the two zones you could walk to, like a larger scale of that, or like? Kind of like like you know how right now basically nobody uses competitive because there's like. It just kind of sucks. Partially, it's just because it's a right. setting in the computer. Like, that's a big part of the reason why nobody does it. So, one of the concepts I'm thinking of is that you have, like, you know, your starting areas over here, and say the three maps are over here. So, you just go to wherever map you want. There's no, like, computer that says, oh, I want to join competitive, casual, whatever. I'm thinking about having something like a mini obstacle course over here that's more difficult. So, if you don't understand the, the mechanics of the movement very well, you just can't get there. And once you get better and you figure out, okay, do some wall jumpings, do some pinch climbings, that sort of thing, then you'll be able to make it to a spot that has the three maps up there as well. Maybe a little bit in a non-Euclidean way. But essentially set up such that if you're here and you would choose to say, I want to play regular by going over here physically, or say, I want to play competitive by going over here physically. So it's built into the space instead of like oh i'm gonna press the option to join competitive or whatever so that's similar yeah. in concept to like the capture the flag where the direction you go is what team you're on except this would be which direction you go is what kind of game is being played over there like i really like the idea of having activities mapped to a certain space you know kind of in the same way that uh 
since I'm an adult and uh, my job has been in has been remote during pandemic times, I have like my computer, right? But now my computer is also where I work. So where I work and where I play video games and screw around is mixed. And then that, that affects you on a very deep fundamental level in a way you don't consciously notice a lot of the time. But it makes work and play kind of morph together because they're spatially located in the same place. So one thing that really helps keep you sane is to just physically have a different spot where you do work and a different spot where you hang out. So I want that kind of connection to space in the game as well. So that's why I want to have these things split like that. I, I think that would feel really cool. Um, I also have some ideas. Yeah, I just put it in there and press map, and it's always different because I change the settings every time. I'm thinking of hosting a. I'm thinking of hosting a. Oh, sorry. I cut you off. Oh, I was thinking of hosting a VR game jam where you have to do movement based games and you're not allowed to do a stick or teleport and just see what people come up with. That is how easy it is to do uh, VR games in a game jam. I would say it is. Part of what's difficult is that like the the environments are kind of a pain in the ass to set up. Like right now, I'm using Unity 2019, a very specific version because I'm trying to use Unity XR, which is an open XR. It's a different thing. It's Unity XR to work with both Steam VR and Oculus uh, SDK. Oh. And I don't. So right now, everything is using Unity XR. But if you use a later version, it changed the wrapper it uses, which causes, which means that you're using like a different API for Steam, which causes bugs with the haptics. So the haptics just don't work at all, and the buttons don't oh, work dude. at all. So I have to implement, I would have to implement all of that on a per platform basis. But the version is like old and out of date, not supported anymore. So like, that's just one aspect of what's difficult about that kind of thing. But I would say the yeah. other thing is that. The problem with locomotion in VR is that it's a very deep problem, right? Like, it's not just about the nausea, which is a big deal, but it's about the concept of how do you map um, that movement into the the controls. And it's a big problem because, like, it's, it's the same reason why everybody is kind of hit on the idea of twin sticks in regular games, right? Um, yeah. But that took a while, and you... you I'm sure you've seen the thing with the old uh, article about the, the Alien vs. Predator game on the PS2, and they're like, oh my god, the, the control system is so terrifying. You use the left stick to move forward and back and side to side, and the right stick to look up and down and left and right. It's so crazy, right? And that, and that thinking took a long time to develop for people to iterate and try different things out, and now it feels natural and smooth and a really, like... I think a good way of thinking about it is that if the game can be immersive, it means that you've stripped away all of the thinking about how you interact with the game, and then the game just does whatever you want. And it's very possible to get immersed in a game where you're doing that um, input just because you're so used to it and it feels pretty good on a 2D screen. And the problem with VR is that we haven't figured out that that kind of more standard way of interacting with the world. and people just fell on stick locomotion because, oh, we use stick locomotion in regular games, and this game has a stick, or this controller has a stick, so we'll use the stick, and now I move around. Teleporting, I think, is just straight garbage. It makes no sense. It feels so bad. It completely disconnects you from the world. Like, in every game, you're automatically a wizard who can't walk somehow, which is just fucked. So I think that sucks. <laughs> And stick locomotion is bad because you're so disconnected from what's happening. Like, needing to, like, the standard that has more or less been sit, set on is that you stick locomotion with hand-based uh, movement. So, like, if your hand is pointing forward and you press forward, you move forward. But if your hand is pressing left and you press forward, then you move this way. So, like, where you move is based on where your hand is facing. But then that becomes a problem if you're, like, holding a gun or needing to interact with something. Now, all of a sudden, your hand has changed position, so the way you move changes. So you're constantly aware of that loop. 
besides the fact that yeah. it's a very, very visual feedback type thing, right? Like, if you close your eyes and press forward, you have no idea where you're going. You need to see where you're going to understand what your hand has done. So now you've got an extra feedback loop of trying to understand exactly how you're moving and incorporating that feedback into where you're going. And that's a very, it's a, it's a really fucked up process because now you're constantly yeah. paying attention to something that makes no sense. Um, mm -hmm. What's great, I think, about Gorilla Tag is, like, you can... I don't know exactly where I am, but you can kind of figure out where you are, even with your eyes closed. Like, I think I'm in the back corner of this of this thing, because, like, I can feel the wall, and I can feel the floor. Yeah, I'm in the back corner. Like, I don't even need to see to understand the way I'm moving, because it's such a natural, yeah. like, one-to-one -one mapping. So, it is very nice. I think... I think the hard thing about locomotion in VR is that I, I only came upon these concepts after like years of being involved in VR and playing different games and paying attention to what works and what doesn't. So I think that you could get a lot of cool like throw, throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks type things. But I would worry that it would be a little demoralizing just because I think this is specifically a really hard problem. So that's yeah. what you feel. I think locomotion in VR is the hardest problem. Because once you can locomote, you, all your options are open. You can now make every type of game again. You're not limited to certain types of experiences. Because yeah. moment to moment is no longer terrible. So it's... Uh, the scissors. Yeah. And some of that's on the hardware problem. And some, some of that's on the hardware side and some of that's on the software side. So yeah. when we get like new like like foot tracking and body tracking, that could help different types well, of locomotion. What's interesting, what's interesting about feet is that I don't actually think foot tracking would help for walking very much. Because well, then you would you still move. have the exact same problems of, yeah, not moving. What's interesting about Gorilla Tag is that your legs actually do give you an axis of control, which is turning, which is really difficult to do with just your hands. Like, if you had to make it so when you touched a surface, your hand rotated and that rotated you in real life, you would just start projectile vomiting everywhere. Like, it, it wouldn't work. So the fact that you have your legs to act as the turn stick actually works really well. So it's yeah. like... It's like you almost need like an like an extra oh input <laughs> to handle the virtual <laughs> movement, <laughs> if that makes sense. I'm not describing that right. The, the thought's not completely yeah. straight in my brain. But it's the same reason why, oh like, if you have a joystick, you can only move in two axes, right? You can do that. Because <laughs> it's just two dimensions. And that's why 3D games are tough, because you can't... You can't just move in 3D space with a joystick. It just flat out doesn't work. So that's why even and 3D games tend to have 2D interaction planes plus like a jump button. Yep. Um, so like having your legs as an extra input gives you the twist. Because you have three dimensions of movement, but then you need a fourth one, which is, which is your yaw. And your legs act as the yaw input without making you vomit. So like, yeah. I don't even think feet controllers would help that much. So I like, I genuinely think the hardware right now is basically on the level of magic. Like, the hardware is so <laughs> unbelievably good, and the software is all terrible. <laughs> I see. So, yeah. So it's all the software side. So means. that's that's my long answer to say, I I don't want to shit on the idea of having a locomotion focused VR game jam. Um, <laughs> I, I just think it would be super hard, like, to, to get something that felt effective and good. But I think it would be great to try, especially with people who don't have a, um... Oh. I think it would be great to try, even without people, even with people who don't have a bunch of VR experience, because they're not prejudiced towards thinking, oh, this is the solution, <laughs> and nothing else will work, yeah. so I'm never even going to try anything. Which a lot of people do. They're just like, oh yeah, you just use stick locomotion. That's your only option. You just use stick locomotion. Yeah. The end. And don't think about it anymore. Which sucks, because yeah. that's a terrible conclusion. No. No. That was pretty good though. I got got away from you for a while. Yeah, it was close. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty good. Alright. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to show you on uh on forest. Some of the, the leaves are um one sided. Terrible? Oh yeah. Yeah, I so uh, yeah, Did one you know of them that? Are. I, I know. I don't know what you mean. This game is crash. perfect, and it would never crash. Uh, that's slander. I can't believe. Oh God! Wall. When you have the baby hat that plays "Let's Go," it crashes. Also, this I is wanna... a slippery wall. This thing right here. Confusing. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that one should not be a slippery wall. That was my bad. Oh, okay. Oh, did you see specific, that was like, physics materials on the walls? Uh, no, I added a, an extra factor that, like, so you know how when you grab something with two hands, they kind of slide towards each other a little bit? Yeah. I made it so that that happens with your single hand when touching certain surfaces as well. It already happened a tiny bit, just so that your arms wouldn't get, like, totally locked to stuff, because it feels a little weird. But it's, um, yeah. So which are the, which are the leaves? Um... Uh, let's get a big. Let's just do that tree. I don't know where it is. They are on that tree. Uh, here's, yeah, there's um, a leaf there, you know. Right here. So the first one is right here. If you drop down, it's right here. Where is it? Just drop. It's one sided. Oh, oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, I'm planning on. Um, I want to try replacing all of these leaves with sprites that has more. Yeah. Um, Transparency oh. so that you can see through them. Interesting. Um, oh yeah. These are just these are literally 3D objects, just really thin. Um, <laughs> because I, I see. this is all I could figure out how to get working. The leaves are the thing that I hate the most in this map. They just look absolutely god awful. I, I've heard <laughs> that um, with the spectator mod, it can be frustrating to um, to avoid all oh, of the god. leaves. Oh god, it is terrible. Yeah. yeah um, I anyway, make it so another that they're just too. like. You can effectively see through them instead of like, you know, because I couldn't make them too poofy, otherwise oh. that would be a total block, but the trees already look completely diseased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm not, not proud of the leaves. Because I couldn't just do the regular style that you do with, with just like a big like cover over them because then oh, obviously yeah. you can't see shit and you're supposed to be able to see stuff when you're climbing through the branches. What's so, up with this yeah. one? Yeah, I want to give sprites a try because I can't put too many actual transparent materials but I think sprites work slightly differently? Like Question mark? I think it should be okay. Hey Lemming, what's up with this leaf? It's a good leaf. What do you mean? Look, I, I clicked... I clicked import UV maps on, on Unity, and then I clicked bake light maps. Wait, hold up. This what leaf more is can I do? Th okay. Those are the only two <laughs> tools I have, dude. <laughs> Why do you gotta be on my case? <laughs> so, you wanna go through and I'll point out every single light mapping error on your maps? You could just point anywhere, that and you'll point helpful. to a light map again. <laughs> What's fun is that every time I bake it, the problem spots move. Like, they never fully go away. They just go from spot to spot. I've never used a light mapper before, so... I, I should yeah. try it, I guess. It looks like fun. Yeah, the, I mean, like, I think on the whole, the baked light maps look great. Like, yeah, it's... And you don't like it, it doesn't hurt the performance at all, but yeah. getting it to bake well is very hard. And I have not figured out how to do it. Would you ever you consider a time really, cycle? A really big level where you can have like a huge boost and you just fly around the whole map? Just scale That's everything up? On the capture the flag the build, um, I made it so that if you got tagged in enemy territory, you would turn like into a ghost, and then you'd have to run back to your starting zone before you would respawn. And oh. I made like the speed multiplier by like two or three or something ridiculous, so like you would just bound through the air. Like, <laughs> it was pretty sick. Yeah, I think Space that like monkey. having different concepts around like being able to move faster and stuff would be super cool. Like, I have an idea that I want to try for like like uh, a character building system like an rpg but without like stats <laughs> yeah. i had yeah. something like like you're a robot and you have like these power cores and you can put the power cords in different parts of your body that'll affect your different oh. stats like maybe you put something in your arms and now your arms are stronger and you can push yourself further so like you can build your character differently by moving these cords these cores around you call it um, a, you call it monkey max <laughs> yeah like, I, I think that that kind of ability of, like, building and changing your character through, like, interacting with your own body. Like, that's
that's you know similar conceptually in some ways to your game. Um, oh, yeah. Like I think having everything like built into your actual character and having to interact with it is really cool. Like there's a game called Stormland where um, at certain yeah. stages you upgrade your arm and you physically take your arm off and put it in this machine and the machine upgrades your arm and then you grab it and you put it back on, which feels pretty cool. <laughs> Realize it wasn't it. Why don't you fall down? Hey, hey you, get down here. Fleming, may I ask what is oh. on your head? Uh, coconut. Oh, that's coconut? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I never <laughs> knew this whole time. What do you think? Look, you can see, if you look under it, you can see the, the white part. <laughs> Wait. Oh, you can. That's actually really cool. Look, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Oh yeah, that's funny. Somebody's coconut that glitch out. Gotta kill him. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah, abusing slippery walls against the creator. <laughs> Maybe he'll change. <laughs> Wait, I'll get I feel into like people spot. mess with this game too much. No! <laughs> <laughs> get into the spot, yeah. Yeah, the first time spot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, the one, the one with that. Uh, yeah. I know Fizz is really good at it, but... <gasps> yeah. oh, I can't do it. You need to learn how to climb. Slow. Yeah, I'm you super inconsistent. Yeah, I am. What? Yep, you do way better than me. I consider myself a decent. Hmm? Oh yeah, you can um yeah, just come climb it really quick and Gotcha. Yeah. That's right. This is definitely not the best way to do it all. <laughs> the best way to learn is on the wall jumps. Once you get the concept down, then you can try yeah. it in different places. Yeah, man, just go to the wall. I've a wall walls. climb backwards recently. It's much easier though. Yeah, I've done it here, but... Oh, you can also yeah. practice it on the corner. Okay. So you yeah, get the feel of like... Oh, Sometimes cool! When you do the corner, I've seen somebody do that before. Oh, I'm not that good at that. Oh, nice. Do they move this brick? No! Oh, don't do the thing. Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna... Loving, where did you get all the sounds? Mm -hmm. Like, did you record them each by yourself? No! I'm gonna guess they're from open game art or free sound. Yeah, that's what I thought. Wait, where is he? Wait, where is he? Did his game crash? Loving? Did I mute him or I'm something? Back. I also oh, know right. you. Oh. Oh, <laughs> your hand died. That That's no fun. Oh, All right, oh, wait, wait, Mose is still here? N no. <laughs> Mose, you? He's got the brown color, it's disguised. Ah. Is Mose sitting in Kenya? <laughs> no, no, he's over here. Okay. Ooh! Right, That's yeah, not good. Cool. Thank you, Biz, for inviting me. Thanks for joining, yeah. I'll probably head out. Yeah, too, I should probably see some work then. Alright, see you guys. Right, see you all Later. Later. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Fun. You get that guy! Get Mosa, get him! No! Ooh, Could no! Be YouTuber that oh. is popular! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Andy suspiciously also sounds like Eric. 
I don't sound like Eric. Yeah. He does. He's just like Eric. No, I don't. I don't. Like you are literally the same person. Oh no. Ooh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Get over here, Moses. Oh no, I messed it up. No. Kind of. Uh. Did he fall? Oh, <laughs> Man, I love the, the footstep sounds. It's so nice. Cause like I can even no. hear it there. If you're on yeah. the ground, you're playing the trees. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Oh, it's quite fantastic. I should have recorded a manhunt video. I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah. Man on four, know. man on five. I don't even know what man am I on. I'm like that was probably. I think I'm going to my third. I'm wondering when I'm gonna receive the hundred dollars from Eric or the competition speech that he gives. Ooh. <laughs> I just feel like whole thing. <laughs> this, this is, is my greatest power. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I just totally failed there, Mosa. Oh. Oh. Do you ever get a chance to play the game, or is it just full development? I've been too busy recently. I have my day job, and then I have working on the game, and spamming people, and other stuff, mm -hmm. so... Not as much time recently, but... Oh, I see. Mistake. <laughs> Yay! I did my thing! What, finally! Did you say you were, like, a, a software developer or something? What's your, what's your day job? Oh. Yeah, I work in enterprise software development, so... Big company uh. doing boring stuff. I see. And then you just do like all the fun programming on the side. Yep. Well, it was well, as fun, fun as you can call it. It came out, and now it's a, jo a second job. <laughs> yeah. I definitely did not mess it up. No one saw that. It's like I can't work on it at the same pace that I used to. Oh. Yeah, it's not as exciting. No. <laughs> no one saw that. Wait, what? Oh, wait, what? I need to oh, get tagged. Oh, someone left. Yeah. We're right. down to three. We are. Look, oh. look, you see the particles? Look at them, they bounce off the floor. Wow. Huh? They look do? the little particles you have. What? <gasps> Thank you! Wow. <laughs> oh. Oh, I think Fuzz turned back. Yeah, people yep. have been crashing a bunch. I need to figure out what's going on. I have access to like the crash data, but it doesn't make sense to me. So I need to do a better job figuring out what's actually going on. All right, uh, I'm gonna take off, guys. All right, yeah. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun, See ya. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, fun, fun playing, playing with, with other good players.